I just recorded this entire theory without my microphone. <laughs> Let's do it again. Recently, there has been some interesting developments in the ever-thickening Scrat lore, so I have returned. You see, in early 2020, I posted a video in which I structured Scrat's entire timeline and then determined that he was an alien terraformer, which the baby was aware of. Don't worry, it makes perfect sense in the context, and the theory was actually proven true an hour before I uploaded it, which resulted in me chopping a third of it away. My theory was that Scrat's basically shaping the world accidentally like an elder god. And then I discovered the short film, which confirmed that the UFO was, in fact, designed and operated by real alien squirrels. I'm still shocked, and now I'm shaking with secondary fear because this thing has surfaced and I believe I've figured out what Blue Sky Studios has intended. Hello, I'm the Theorizer. It was announced a while back that a series of shorts known as Scrat Tales was going to be released on Disney Plus until it was cancelled. Yes, we were going to get some amazing lore and they wanted to keep it under wraps. Understandable, I suppose. We did, however, get a very brief look at what it would have entailed, and what the heck is this? So in my quasi-semi-pseudo opinion, these shorts would have shown Scrat trying and failing to educate and destroy a child saber-toothed squirrel. This baby Scrat is, I believe, a possible reference back to Roshan, and thus I believe he would have ties back to my theory. Yes, baby Scrat is a critical linchpin. First of all, I'm sure everyone's asking, is Scrat at his baby mama? The answer is yes. They share the same color, Scrat has a love-hate relationship with him, the baby blows a bubble like they both do in Ice Age 3, and oh dear, Scratette's voice actress is literally the creator of the show. I have reason to believe that Scratette dumped baby Scrat on Scrat and abandoned them for a better nut. I'd refer to her as a certain gardening tool, and not just because she's a terraformer. This child is no longer supported. I do hope she'll make a cameo, assuming this show is even going to be a thing still, because if all this is the case, then we need to restructure the timeline. But first, let's be clear on the alien side of things. In the full short film, which was partially incorporated into the fifth movie, Scratch spends most of it doing the usual UFO antics, but then it's revealed that shortly before he rammed into the asteroid the second time, he was actually not inside of it. He was abducted by a massive mothership shaped like an acorn, and inside he battles over his nut with a few gigantic female alien squirrels who are also voiced by Scratit's actress. This is a clue. Karen Disher is the missing link, I'm telling you. And as you can see, my original theory was completely on the right track. Alright, so on to the timeline. The shorts would take place sometime after Ice Age the Third, which coincides with the coincidental new film coming out on Disney+, Plus and the fact that aliens theoretically protected the underground dinosaurs. That's not interesting, though. What is would be the influx of plot holes I've now discovered. First, how does Scrat in outer space with no ship somehow get one to go to Mars? Second, how does Scrat's 20,000-year freeze journey relate to his No Time for Nuts nonsense? And third, how does No Time for Nuts 4D fit in? Alright, so let's tackle the Hawaii scene. Essentially, it seems as though Scrat landed in the future during the end of No Time for Nuts, which means he'd have access to the time machines and thus the ability to return home. Back home is when he'd eventually get frozen and puts the end of Ice Age 1 at the end of the timeline. No Time for Nuts 4D, on the other hand, seems at first glance to be an updated canon containing more scenes we didn't get to see in the original version, but it could be a sort of indication that Scrat is going back through the first short film all over again during his eventual return to the Ice Age period. It's called 4D for a reason, and I don't think it's because it's all up in your senses, but rather because it's literally a depiction of four-dimensional mechanics, i.e. timelessness. To finish with the first question, I have the answer locked solidly in place, and it's that the Mars sequence takes place during Scrat's antics with the spaceship before he was abducted and all that nonsense. The proof for this is that we zoom up into space at the end of the film and view Mars as a barren wasteland as the film has ended. Only when Neil DeBuck Weasel narrates over it does he openly flash back to when it was habitable, meaning this must have occurred earlier, i.e during Scrat's initial antics. This spawns two more questions. One, how then does Mars look barren during the ping-pong segment? And this all means that Scrat's last moment in space occurred when he escaped the black hole and was left stuck out in the middle of nowhere. How does he get out of this situation? I would be inclined to say that No Time for Nuts features Scrat in the Arctic during the present, but it says 20,000 years here too, so what? All the planets look the same size here, and then suddenly they reform into larger sizes after colliding and such, so what it means is that they keep changing around as they form, and this means Mars went from wasteland to habitable to wasteland, and I would like to state that this is possible only because A, Blue Sky maintains that this is a highly fictional show, and B, I'm later going to discuss the supernatural side of things and the alien 
Guardians probably had involvement, which is why they coincidentally showed up at the perfect time. So again, how does Scrat survive deep space? The answer is that his ship was still out there despite being broken. Twice he was shown returning to it, and thus he crash lands it back on Earth. Easy. So to put all this simply, the Scrat species is alien, does not belong here, which makes perfect sense because at the time of Scrat's creation, they intended for him to be a fictional animal. I believe Scrat Et is important here too, and thus her probable child, Baby Scrat, is as well. The Scrat species is composed of alien terraformers who use acorns to achieve their goals. They are essentially the gods, and I think that our terrestrial Scrats know this too. Look no further than Scratlantis. This is an advanced civilization on a floating terraformed island, and all of them look strikingly similar. The females are Scratettes, and the males are Scrats. If this is any indication in my mind, I believe these are the aliens who've either been banished to Earth or tasked with evolving their species. They set up a whole demonstration for Scrat where they display their talents all at once, but Scrat is an immortal loose cannon who intervenes and destroys their progress leading to humanity evolving instead, as heavily implied by the present in No Time for Nuts. Santa abuses Scrat too, mocking and then assaulting him. This seems to be a problem, and not how the evolution was supposed to progress. Scratlantis had technology and they worshipped the acorn, mapping the stars similarly to how Scrat aligned them during his cosmic catastrophe. The spaceship repeatedly tried ejecting Scrat, but he still knew how to use it ultimately. Scratlantis is the motherlode, and has been sought after by numerous other squirrels, as seen with the acorn map. In fact, I do believe that this Scrat was murdered as he is frozen in a very specific position. He probably also got too close to finding it. Scratlantis is probably a giant ship, if I'm being honest. Space ship. It changes its geography repeatedly. All in all, Scrat is, I believe, unintentionally nudging the world towards human evolution as opposed to his own species' progression. This is why the humans up until that point couldn't speak, but all of the animals could. And this is why the aliens stifled human evolution as implied by Roshan's knowing encounter with a similar UFO, and likewise, Sid's encounter with the frozen evolution. And I don't think it's any coincidence that these films retell the Bible, and everyone agrees with me. Noah's Ark, Armageddon, creation all by Scrat. It's relentless. So if this is all the case, then who is Scrat? I believe Scrat is God, and baby Scrat is Jesus. This has been my conclusion for some time, but now I'm starting to second-guess myself. Something is wrong. Scrat might be someone else. On my brainstorming journey, I at first said Cain. I'm not sure why or how I thought I could get away with this. Perhaps he imparts a personality onto the acorn and believes he is all of Adam and Eve's children simultaneously? <laughs> Unprovable. I moved on to Prometheus then, given how he seems to be evolving humanity and everything has been Greek up until this point. He also literally murders the mama dino, freezing her in place. How? By chest bursting her deeply reminiscent for the assassination. But I was consistently forgetting who exactly it was that got the famous punishment until being informed on Twitter that yes, it was Sisyphus. Scrat is Sisyphus. Very obviously too, this is his torment, destined to roam the earth forever, trying to catch the uncatchable. Roll the endless boulder to what end? Well, I believe I have our answer. Scrat is attempting to plant the tree of knowledge. This is Neil the Buck Weasel. He knows a thing or two about the universe. He is the imaginary figure within Buck's mind alongside none other than a robot and a Greek philosopher. What a coincidence. Not. You see, Buck has an innate sense of the universe. He understands that something stupid annihilated Mars. He says that someone up there likes us so as to reference God. And most damning of all, he knows exactly when Scrat is going to screw with the lunar tides. This is all indicative of one crucial fact. Buck is very specifically in tune with the universe and so is Scrat. But why? How can Scrat plant the tree of knowledge when everyone is constantly going on about how stupid he is? Neil the Buck Weasel harps on this primarily, so this is where the bombshell hits. Scrat is a tool. He is not doing this. It's the acorn! <laughs> Introducing Nutrigen, the culprit. Clearly a pun of nitrogen, but we are shown that it is in fact a compound composed of singular nut atoms. When the compound is fundamentally violated, nuclear fission occurs and it produces an atomic explosion in the shape of an acorn which then implodes into a black hole that violates the laws of physics. Neil the Buck Weasel seems to be in tune with nitrogen as he repeatedly ponders the origins of the universe. I believe this is it. 
I believe nutrigen is the key, the origin, because it proves that this is not an acorn. The acorn is a conscious entity, as we do see it tilt towards Scrat in a longing manner, and once they even joke about how it looks like a spider. Don't believe me? I didn't either. Nutrigen is pretty damning, but then I rescanned the 4D special and caught the modern museum in which we get proof. The acorn has a skeleton. Every time Scrat seeks it out, he gets one that's just not quite right. Every time he shoves it into the ground, it rips apart the planet and leads him to another evolutionary situation, whether it be the meltdown or the journey to the center of the Earth, which itself just so happens to look like ancient alien technology. This acorn is the true culprit. It has devoted followers who have tried seeking it out, but every time they get close, the acorn bends the universe to its will and steers evolution towards the Bible and towards famous mythical figures. It assimilates its would-be captors into torturous roles. Scrat is Sisyphus. The aliens are Greek gods. Scratlantis is Atlantis. It runs the universe. It's the fabric with which the time vortex is constructed, to the point where the time machine is loosely shaped like an acorn, and the suction mimics the Scrat alien's nutrigen black hole. It's worshipped across the stars and religions, the future has monuments built to it, and the answer should be clear to you by now, as when Scrat dies, he goes to heaven, which is populated by acorns, and the truth is revealed, as just before he is sucked back out of another metaphysical vortex, we see the center of the light, at the core of existence, the acorn. For the acorn is both scientifically and religiously God. It is also possible that Baby Scrat is actually the acorn's child with Scratette, and Scrat's rage is thus at losing the love triangle, once again completing my promise. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.